whatever clarity is required, that clarity will be offered uh, so that uh, the uncertainty that may prevail in the minds of the people can be removed. Car regulations are concerned it uh, the you know the it created some sort of a suspicion of uh, round tripping. That's why you know the uh, they say that we are policing uh, investment. Our concern is to see to it that there's transparency, that there's an accountability, and disclosure of information is mandatory. Tax changes in the budget, the general anti-avoidance rules or GAR as it's called and the retrospective tax changes with regard to mergers and acquisitions have spooked investors. But looks like damage control is now coming with the Prime Minister also acting as the Finance Minister. Hello and welcome to We Mean Business. I'm Shweta Rajpal Kohli. On the show today, we discuss if the newly constituted guard panel can modify the tax changes to satisfy foreign investors and whether the government will do anything to soften the blow with regard to those retrospective tax changes. Let me quickly introduce our special guests on the panel today. We've got Mr. Dinesh Kanabar, Deputy CEO and Chairman of Tax, KPMG, joining us from Mumbai. Also, H.P. Ranina, a very well-known corporate tax lawyer, also joins us from Mumbai. Anuradha, that the partner of DMD Advocates and the Council for Vodafone, also in Mumbai. Bijal Ajinkya, head of the tax practice of Nishad Desai Associates, also from Mumbai with me here in the Delhi studio. We've got Mr. R. Prasad, the former chairperson of CBDT and also the member of the CCI. Also, Asim Chavla, partner of um, uh, and uh, head of the tax practice with MPC Legal. Also with us uh, in the Delhi studio, our in-house finance expert, Sapna Das. Many thanks, all of you, for joining us and sharing uh, uh, your views here on this uh, show that we're going to just begun, begin the discussion. But first, let me start by actually bringing you a big interview that we had today by none other than uh, Sapna Das. She interviewed Parthasharthi Shom, uh, the chairman on the, uh, of the expert committee on GAR guidelines. Uh, but before we talk about GAR, let's try and get his views uh, on those retrospective tax changes that has particularly hit one company, Vodafone. Let's listen in. We have to see, without giving away our kitty, that we are doing the right thing not to uh, bring in a lot of risk and uncertainty for foreign investment in our country, as well as domestic investment, because a lot of domestic inv investors are now going out. Yeah. And uh, so we don't want to stop them. I mean, on the uh, because that is their decision, finally. I mean, it should be, but we should try to keep them attracted to invest in the, our own country. Now, in order to do that uh, for risk and uncertainty, I think if you really go for retroactivity, and then I, when I compare it with Brazil, where it is unconstitutional, uh, to have a retroactive uh, situation. Whereas in developed countries, retroactivity is used, like in the UK. But if you really see the wording, it is an exceptional circumstances after a lot of discussions and so on and so forth. So the caveats that are given in the guidelines for retroactivity, so it's almost like never done. It is not that it is never done, but it's almost like it. So it is, there are many impediments on the revenue authorities before retroactivity can be applied. Right. So I think we have to look at it in, in, in a very balanced manner. And, and my own uh, view in general on this, I can tell you, is that I think in the rest of the world, all of these kinds of issues today, especially with respect to capital, capital flight, etc., are subjected to consultation for a long period of time, and there's That's nothing right. to hide. That's in, in, right. And you know, we we have to consult with our stakeholders. They are the other ones from whom we are collecting tax, and not that they should not pay the right tax. They should, and we should have penalties and all all in place. But on the other hand, I think we do need. Uh, consultation in which our stakeholders will also f uh, feel comfortable and there's a professional discussion of what is being done. In in the UK, for example, these matters, for example, controlled foreign companies. See, it has taken four or five years in consultation before, right. you know, firming up. There, uh, GAR has taken uh, a couple of years. So, I think that that is the next challenge for us in terms of tax policy making, tax administration, how we engage with the stakeholders, how we uh, do we treat them like customers. Right. You know, and that should be the approach. Yeah, that should be the approach. And, and it is not just an ideal. Most countries are doing that now. Right, sir. So. All right. Uh, 
Parthasarthi Shom there are talking on the issue of those retrospective tax changes. We'll, of course, be playing out his comments uh, on GAR guidelines. Remember, he's heading that committee for GAR guidelines. That will be later on the show. But let's first discuss what the government can do to soften the blow with regard to those retrospective tax changes. Let me quickly get a word in from Sapna Das on that. Uh, Sapna, a lot of uh, optimism and hope building up ever since uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh has taken charge of the finance ministry. But what's very unclear is what can the government really do to do some sort of damage control on that one because it has clearly spooked foreign investors and nobody likes the retrospective word. That's right, Shweta. Uh, there's no doubt about what you're saying. Uh, however, there we need to do a reality check. And this is a point that has been often repeated, the fact that the finance bill has now got the parliament's approval. It's a it's, law. It's the law of the land now. Right. So in order to change or tweak any part of Section 9 of the IT Act, and I think Mr. Prasad is the right person on this, check me sir if I'm wrong, you have to go back to the parliament to take permission. And it will have to be a kind of a substantive amendment, sir. Because uh, earlier on, the finance secretary had told that the changes that they have done retrospectively are not substantive amendments. You know, uh, probably the government is trying to take that line, Shweta, so that you know they don't uh, invite the ire of the Supreme Court. But as of now, it looks like a fair company. So these are good statements coming out from you know uh, you know very seasoned experts. But it's all in a kind of a hindsight. In hindsight, we should have done that and we should have done that. But the point is very simple. The damage has been done. Yeah, and, and what do we do now? Either you just sit quietly on that notice, you don't send it. Uh, you know, can, but can you really do that? I think Mr. Prasad and the other experts will be... You know. All right, important points that Sapna has raised right now, both on the fact that uh, one, of course, uh, there could be a go slow on part of the government with regard to Vodafone's tax demand, and secondly, the fact that it will be very difficult to actually change something which is now the law of the land. Uh, let me actually go across first to Anuradha Dutt, who is uh, the counsel for Vodafone, to get a sense uh, from her as to what exactly is Vodafone expecting. And do you think there are some uh, some some changes now with... with with the change of guard in, in North Block, uh, do you think you can be a little more hopeful now than you were, say, a few months ago? Well, uh, I'm not yeah. sure uh, whether Vodafone is hopeful or not. But I think uh, now that one is sensing that everyone feels that there has been, uh, you know, there was a mistake in, in introducing the retrospective amendments, I think the government can take one of the two options. One is have the political will prospective amendment, but that requires a lot of political will. I'm not sure uh, if the government has that political will. Uh, the other way to do it um, is actually, in to my mind, uh, you know, you can bring in a CBDT circular and say that this amendment would apply to all those companies which do not have a Supreme Court judgment. So you can grandfather the Supreme Court judgment and I think that would also take care of the fact that a signal is going that one, once the highest court in the land is giving out a judgment that is respected and that will not be changed retrospectively. So either of the two is what the government can do but as I said they have to have the will to do it. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app. Fully optimized for retina display. Full screen view. Faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.